إذا الأمجاد قد عظمت فللأمجاد بانيها ومن يسعى إلى العليا سيدركها بما فيها ويبني مجده جدلا فروح الفاذ يعليها ليصبح همة تروي عن العليا مغاني Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another explosive episode of the ITV Math Show. I'm your host and presenter Mohammed Kota, shooting here from the ITV studios here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, again, like we like we start off all our shows, just like to thank all our all our viewers for all their comments. And I hope that for those of you who have purchased our DVD sets, that you are using the DVDs in conjunction with the episodes. Some of the comments, as we always start of our show, we go back to the comments that were sent in from the last episode. And some of the comments that, were, that have come in is that when are the episodes uploaded? Now, guys, you guys all know that it takes about a week or so before all our previous episodes are then uploaded onto the website. The website that you guys need to watch is itvnetworks.tv. If you haven't purchased the set, then obviously you will be watching the episodes of all the previous uh, programs that we have shot since the beginning of Ramadan. Now, guys are in Matrix. This is crunch time. We are coming towards the end of great 11s and 12s. We're coming towards the end of 2015. And this is the time when the heat is on. Now, we started with finance. The previous episode that we did was Finance 1, Part 1, where we started off with just basically explaining to you what is finance, what is interest, simple interest, compound interest formula, depreciation, straight line depreciation, and uh, reducing balance method or diminishing balance method depreciation. Now, today we are going into the grade 12 finance, and this is going to be a very interesting episode, especially for our older viewers. For our elderly viewers who are watching the show because mind you we've got thousands of elderly parents where i meet in the streets or in shopping malls or wherever the case may be and they say we're watching your show and we're enjoying it so if you are over 50 and you are enjoying uh, and you are watching the itv math show well done to you um let's get started here we're now starting with finance we're doing part two we're now going into the core grade 12 syllabus now Let's, we ended our last episode with converting nominal to effective interest rates. Okay, we're now going to go into the grade 12 financial component. And just to introduce you to the grade 12 component, what it comprises. Okay, the grade 12 component comprises annuities, loans, fixed payments into loans, deferred payments into loans, uh, as well as savings and sinking funds. Now, many of you have taken out um, annuities. You have come across the word annuities. And many of the parents that are watching, you've taken out, you've taken out an annuity in some form or the other, whether it's life cover, whether it's policy. We call it today policies. And how do they then calculate what your repayment will be, monthly repayment into a policy will be, if you want, say, a million rand at the age of retirement or at retirement age at the age of 65 or whatever the case may be now let's explain to you what are the topics uh let's give you a mind map here to tell you what are the examinable topics what are the types of questions that will appear in your grade 12 syllabus so number one the first part of the finance here we're still going to be doing depreciation now, depreciation also being a very important component when something depreciates. Like we said the last time, the only thing that appreciates, that increases in value, and as we all know, is land and buildings. But other than that, everything depreciates. Okay, that's the first component, which is depreciation. The second component that we will be busy with is your future value. Okay, let's just do this in red. Let's do this in red. Where is our duster? I think you just... Okay, boys and girls, the first topic that we have here is depreciation. And we said that everything depreciates land and buildings. Just to recap, land and buildings is the only one that appreciates, that increases in value. Our second topic that we will be dealing with in finance are your annuities. 
right? You've got from annuities, obviously we all know we've got the future value and we've got the present value. Now I will explain to you what each of these concepts represent and what each of these concepts mean. Right, the next part from here, right, dealing in finance here is our balance outstanding on a loan. Balance outstanding on a loan. The next concept that we have here after that is your trading. When you need to trade in an item. Now many of you, like I said, the elderly parents, you've got companies, you've got businesses, you want to trade in a, a motor vehicle or you'd like to trade in some equipment to purchase new equipment, you'd like to open up a fund. These are called funds. You'd like to open up a fund at a bank or financial institution and you'd like to find out how much do you need to pay in every month into that fund in order, in order for you to be able to obtain that item in say five years time or in ten years time, whatever the period may be. Two more concepts that are included in here, so let's just put two more lines, we've got one line there and let's just put another line going here and we've got the final payment into a loan and we've got deferred payment. When you decide to defer a payment, what will your new monthly or quarterly or annual payment be into a fund or for a loan? Okay, guys, so this is, your, this is generally what is going to be tested, right? Depreciation, your annuities, future value, present value, which then will be carried through in all these items. Balance outstanding on loans, trading values, final payments, and deferred payment. So if you understand all these concepts, you should be prepared for the final exams in grade 12. Now we're going to start going through each of these. So I'm going to go in order. I'm going to try as, as best as possible to go in order. So I'm going to give you a depreciation problem for grade 12, a future value problem, present value problem. We're then going to do balance outstanding on a loan, a trading problem, final payment and, deter, uh, and deferred payment. Obviously it will all not be covered in today's show. Like we started, so this is part two. We might go into another episode or another two episodes if it may be. So the whole of finance then will be covered probably over four episodes. So you guys need to be focused. I hope you guys have opened up an ITV math show file and I hope you are going through it, you are labeling it. Remember, I'm not there to see what you, what you do. I'm not there to mark your work. You make sure that you understand what you have written because you are rewriting your own study guide over a series of episodes. So now, let's get started with the depreciation problem and then we will go into all our different components. So let's start, guys. We are now in finance. Component 2, grade 12 only. This is not for grade 10. It is not for grade 11. Once we are done with the grade 11 and 12 syllabus, we will then go into the grade 8, 9 and 10 syllabus. And that's where the show is heading, hopefully. Okay, so like I said, this is for grade 12 only. Grade 11s, this is just for your added information. If you sit back, relax, just enjoy the show and learn it because these are concepts that you will be needing for next year. So let's get started with depreciation. Now obviously we're not going to start off with the easy depreciation. I'm going to throw you into the deep end with an exam type question of what a depreciation problem would look like. Okay, we'll say, let's say question in the exam, it would say how long will it take For equipment, I'm going to write it in shorthand, for equipment, remember this is mathematics, not English, so I'm not going to be criticized on the way I write. How long will it take for equipment to depreciate, to depreciate to 25% of its original value based on the reducing balance method uh, let's see how long will it take for equipment to depreciate to 25 percent of its original value based on the reducing balance method at let's say 16 percent per annum 
and that would be six marks. Okay, guys, so you've got equipment, you've bought equipment today, you want to know how long will it take for that equipment to depreciate, to devalue, to become scrap, to get a book value, to 25% of its original value. That means, say, let's take for example, you bought an item for 100 Rand today. You want to know how long will it take for that item to depreciate to 25 Rand. From 100 Rand to 25 Rand. What period will it take if the depreciation rate is 16% per annum and they tell us so that's your rate on the reducing balance method and as we said in our last show another word if you have been paying attention or you have if you've been following the series of episodes you would have known that another word for reducing balance method is diminishing balance method of course another word for reducing balance method is diminishing balance method and this you will use in accounting as well as in mathematics so let's get started to in our answer right our answer says now how long so now we know a equals p into 1 minus i to the power n why to the power n because we are using the reducing balance method or we are using the diminishing balance method now a being our book value but we don't have it we don't have it you might be saying okay so that's our principal value our original value 1 minus what have they given me the i 0,16. I always told you your percentage must be put as a decimal. So 16% would be 0,16. 16 over 100, 0,16 to the power n. That's what we need to find. How long? We are looking for the period. n represents the period. How long? Okay, now. They say to 25% of its original value. They don't give us p. But if, obviously, if P is our original amount, 25% of its original value would be 0,25P. So the final amount would be 25% of the original amount is equal to the original into 1 minus 0,16 to the power N. So if they said 75% of its original value would be 0,75. If they said half of its original value would be 0, 0,5. So you just convert the A to 0, 0,5 P. We're representing it with this. All we have to do now is it's an equation. So we divide this side by P. What I do on the left, I do on the right. It's a simple equation. So what, are we, what am I left with now? 0, 0,25 is equal to 1 minus 0, 0,16 is 0, 0,84 to the power N. Now that we've come to grade 12 and we need to solve n in the power, what system in mathematics do we use? Yes, you are right. We use logs. So guys, we are now going to be cutting for a three-minute ad break. When we get back, grade 12s, by this time of the year already, you know how to use logs. Attach a log. Attach a log. Solve for n in the power, guys. You've got three minutes. When we get back... After the ad break, I'll be going through the memo. Enjoy your break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the ITV Math Show. I left you before the break. Remember, this is our second segment of today's episode. We are dealing with finance grade 12. This is specifically, this is the opening topic. We started with depreciation. Gave you a problem to do before break, and I told you how long will it take for equipment to depreciate to 25% of its original value based on the reducing balance method at 16% per annum. So there we go. Our A becomes 0,25P because 25% 25 of its original value is equal to original into 1 minus your rate, 0,16 to the power N. And now I told you during the break, you had time to do logs. Okay. Now for those of you who still don't know how to attach a log, and I know 99% or 90% of you still don't know how to do it. Let me show you. Right. Forget about this now. I'm going to show you how to, take, how to take a system of logs and apply it here in order to solve for the power. Okay. So, Mr. Cameraman, if you can just zoom in on this side here. If you've got 2 to the power x is equal to 9. You need to solve for x in the power. Now, logs is the only system in mathematics where you can make the power the subject of the formula. So you attach a log, right? Because you cannot make the basis the same. 
So you attach a log and you attach a log. So what does this now become? It becomes log 2 to the power x is equal to log 9. Now you bring the power in front of the log because that's a rule. That's the first rule of logs. After attaching a log, you, you, what you do on the right, you do on the left. So you attach a log on the left, you attach a log on the right. You bring the power down. So now x comes to the front. So you got x log 2 is equal to log 9. Now it's a normal equation. We're now solving for x. Divide this side by log 2. What I do on the left, I do on the right. So what is x equal to? x is equal to log 9. You can go to your calculators. Log 9 divided by log 2 equals, and you should get an answer of about 3,1699, blah, 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 blah. So x is approximately 3,17. And there we go. That's how we solved it. So if you say x uh, 2 to the power and you substituted 3,17 back into there, you would now get 2 to the power 3,17. You should get 8,999999 or probably 9,001, which you can then round off to 9. Now, we're going to apply the same system. That's a system of logs. That is the log system. Now let's take the log system and let's apply it here to solve for n. So what did I say? Attach a log on both sides. So attach a log there, attach a log there. Bring the power in front of the log. So watch what's going to happen. You're now going to have n log 0, 0,84 is equal to log 0, 0,25. We now want n on its own. So divide the side by log 0, 0,84. What I do on the left, I do on the right. So n is equal to log 0, 0,25 divided by log 0, 0,84. N is equal to, and Mr. Cameraman can come and zoom in on our calculator here. Right, I think you should get 8,5 years, I think. I'm not sure. I'm just taking a chance. We say log 0, 0,25, close brackets, divided by log 0, 0,84, close brackets, equals 7,95. So so you get 7,95 years, which is approximately 8 years. So it should take 8 years for an item to depreciate to 25% of its original value based on the reducing balance method at 16% per annum. Please guys, this is an examination style question. Know it. You got to know this. Learn it, process it, understand it, apply it, master it. Okay, so there, there goes. I hope you guys have taken all this down. Let's now go on to, now we are done with depreciation. Now you all want to know. You're waiting for the meat. So let's get, give you some nyama, what we call in South Africa nyama. We call, we call meat in South Africa nyama. So now you guys are waiting for the meat of this. And the meat of this is now going to be your future value and present value annuity formula. So let's get into annuities and we get into future value and present value. So let's first give you your formulas, right? So let's go. Future value. Future value is equal to x into 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 all over i. That is your future value formula. Then we've got your present value. PV formula. So this one here was your FV, future value. This is PV, present value. And PV equals X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the power minus N all over I. I'm not going to go into the history of the formula. I'm not going to tell you where it comes from. I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to prove to you where it comes from. That's book work. That you can go back to your textbooks or you can go back to your teachers. But just to tell you that these are derived. Where are they derived from? They derive from summing a series, a geometric series of payments. Do you know, you remember sequences and series? Do you remember the episodes when we said your SN formula, A equals R to the power N minus 1 over R minus 1. R to the power N minus 1 over R minus 1. That was summing a geometric series. So both of them are summing a geometric series of payments. Right? A series of payments for annuities. Now, what does each of these parts represent? Now we know future value is your big lump sum. Right? Your big amount. 
your final amount. Remember, this is final. And that is of final or future. And that is your present. Also a lump sum. So PV is also your lump sum. Your big amount. So your big amount is equal to X represents your monthly installment. Your monthly installment. I, we know, is our interest rate. As a decimal. N being the period. How long it's going to take. 1 is 1. I, again, is also your interest rate. Lump sum X. I, same thing, interest rate. Negative N for present value over I. Those are your two formulas, guys. Your final future value formula, your present value formula. Many of you, till now, still don't know when you are posed with the question, which formula do I use? Do I use future value or do I use present value? Because they look exactly the same. The only thing the one says, 1 plus I, 1 plus I to the power N minus 1. And the other one said 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N. So which formula do you use when you want to calculate your monthly installment? When do you use each of these types? Very simple. I'm going to give you a simple acronym for you to remember. Like we did in all our other topics, I gave you a system to understand. Let's give you a system here. Just remember FSPL. If you can remember FSPL, right? I don't know, make up something with it. Some of you who have been using our DVD sets already, you already know this. Flippin' stupid people. Just remember flippin' stupid. So the whole of finance for grade 12 is summarized by FSPL. Flippin' stupid people. What does it stand for? Future value. Future value for savings. So we're going to be using our future value for savings. Or what we call a sinking fund. Another word for savings is a sinking fund. Why do we call it sinking? Sinking means going down. So we're working towards an amount. If some of you are parents, mothers, fathers watching the show, you want to redo your whole kitchen and you want 200, you know it's going to cost you 200,000 rand because, I mean, that's a in typical Indian kitchen today. 200 grand is what Indians spend on a, on a, I know it's insane, it's madness. But 200 grand is what they spend on a kitchen. So you want, you know, the wife is putting a lot of pressure on you. Poor husband, shame, gets up 5 o'clock in the morning, slogs the whole day just because he needs a Gagano kitchen for his wife. So anyway, he needs 200 grand to renovate the kitchen because she will not keep quiet until he renovates that kitchen for her. So in any case, he needs 200 grand to build up a kitchen, but he doesn't have that kind of cash. So he opens up a sinking fund. He says, don't worry, don't worry, to pacify, to save his marriage. So he's got an extension, a new lease on his marriage for five years, right? He tells his wife, hang on for five years. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to open up a sinking fund. I'll open it up for five years at a financial institution, right? Haram for us Muslims. He puts it into a fund and he wants to now accrue interest. So he will now put in monthly into a fund. At, in five years time, he will take his debit card or he'll go to the bank, take out the 200,000 rand and he will go and give it to his wife and say, here, knock yourself out, go and do what you want. So in any case, that is a sinking fund. You are working towards an amount. So another word for savings is sinking fund. We use the future value formula, future value, flippin' stupid people. Future value for savings or sinking fund, and we use the present value formula. So future value formula for savings or sinking fund, present value formula for loans. L represent loans. So whenever you're taking out a loan, you're borrowing money, right? Some of you... 99% of everyone, their houses are not paid up. It's mortgaged. It's bonded to the bank. The bank owns it, not you. Right. You've taken out a loan. You've taken out a loan for 1.2 million, 5 million, 10 million. The minute you take out a loan, when you want to calculate what is your monthly installment on that loan for 30 years. So now you can do your own calculations at home. So even if you're intending to buy a house, stay tuned to this episode because after this break, after our next break, we're now going to go be doing examples of if you want a 
2 million rand house, 1.5. You want to calculate your own affordability. You don't need to go to a bank. That's what the show is here, to show you how we can use this formula in order to calculate your affordability, whether you can afford to repay a loan of, say, 1.2 million rand over a period of 30 years, and what your current, your monthly installments will be. Okay, so we're almost there for our next ad break. I hope you've taken down these formulas. Let's now go into, let's erase, and let's start cracking, let's start going into the nyama into the meat of today's episode, and that is future value. So let's start off with the future value annuity, right? You've already started in grade 12s, we're already exam time, so we're about to cut for an ad break. I'm going to give you some information, and after the break, when we get back from the break, we will actually work out the memo. So, you open up a sinking fund, that's the question in the exam. I'm not going to write the whole thing out, I'm just going to give you the vital information. You open up a sinking fund and you need 250,000 Rand in your fund. Okay? The interest rate, interest rate is, let's say, 13% per annum, compounded monthly. You take it over five years, right? Your period is five years. Calculate your monthly installment or repayment into the fund for four marks. Could be four to five marks. That's the question, guys. You need a sinking fund for 250,000 Rand to do the kitchen. Interest rate that the bank will give you is 13% per annum compounded monthly. The period that you want it over is five years. You want to now calculate what will your monthly repayment be into the fund. Guys, we're going for our next ad break. When we get back, stay tuned. Keep your dials locked on channel 347. This is I ITV Match Show, the best, best match show you'll ever watch in your whole life. Stay tuned. <laughs> Boys and girls, welcome back to the ITV Mesh Show. We ended up our previous segment. This is the third segment of today's episode. We've got one more segment after this, and that wraps up today's episode. Remember, we are not finishing finance today. Today is episode two. We probably will still do another two episodes after that, but they are running in series. So the question was, sinking fund, 250,000 rand, interest rate 13% per annum, compounded monthly. The period is five years. Calculate the monthly installment into the fund. Now the question is, is it a future value or is it a present value? What did you say? Flippant, stupid people. Future value for savings or sinking fund, present value for loans. So what is this? It's a sinking fund. Future value or present value? Of course, must be future value. So what are we going to do? We're gonna, in our answer, FV equals x into 1 plus i to the power n, that's an i to the power n minus 1 all over i. Fv, your big amount, so 250,000. Copy and paste. So we got 250,000. Remember, it's all about formula. Mathematics is all about formula, substitution, and knowing what to put where. Now we go into x. That's our monthly installment because that's what they want us to find. Calculate the monthly installment. So we're looking for x into 1 plus, what's your interest rate? 0, 0,13 compounded monthly. How many months in the year? 12. So 0, 0,13 over 12 to the power 12. Remember, if you divide your interest rate by 12 for compounding, you multiply your power by 12. So 12 times n, how many years? 5 years. Minus 1 all over I, 0, 0,13 over 12. Okay, we now need to solve for X. So now I'm going to show you a little trick that I'd like you to do. Obviously, we need to make X the subject of the formula. So instead of doing a lo whole lot of calculation, I'm going to show you... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. We're now going to use one system. One system on our calculator that we're going to plug in and we're going to get our X value. So now, I want you to pay attention and listen. Right, get your calculators out. Get your scientific, your... Hmm, I'm not even going to say the brand. But get your scientific. That's the one. So Mr. Cameraman, zoom in, show the viewer. That's the calculator that they need. And guys, if you're using any other calculator other than this, 
you are in trouble. So this is the natural display. Okay? Please make sure that you get this calculator so that, and I think you all know what calculator that is. Okay, I'm going to show you now how it's done. So we're going to be moving between calculator and problem. So let's do this. I think we've stuck this here with some. Yeah, let's do this. Let's take the calculator so I don't need to run across the whole board. Let's put the board here. There we go. Mr. Calculator, you just stand just where you are. Let's start. Pay attention. You now start from the denominator. To make x the subject of the formula, you start from the denominator and you multiply it by the bigger number outside. So let's go to our calculator, right? Press your fraction key. Let's just see, right? Mr. Cameraman, are you zooming in? We've got our fraction key. We've got 0, 0,13 over 12. 0, 0,13 over 12. Go to the side, multiply it by 250. 1,2,3. Boom. Press equals. And you get an amount of 8,1,2,5 over 3. You should get an amount of 8,1,2,5 over 3. That's what your calculator should tell you. Don't clear. Don't do anything else. That's not your final answer. So we took the denominator to make x the subject of the formula. You start with the denominator, multiply it by the bigger number, and then we divide it by everything else. We divide it by this entire thing besides the x. Everything else, exactly. You copy and paste it on your calculator, but you divide. So we start with the denominator, multiply, press equals, then you divide it by this whole thing and press equal to again. And that will give you your x amount. So here goes. So we got 8125. That multiplied by that is 8125 over 3, divided by bracket, bracket. You got two brackets here, guys. Bracket, bracket, 1 plus fraction, 0, 0,13 over 12. Some of the parents might be watching and they say, where did this calculator come from? We didn't have this calculator in our days. We still had to use books. Well, that's technology for you. To the power, 12 times 5, we can say 12 times 5, or you can just say 60 one time. We know 12 times 5 is 60. Come down, minus 1, close brackets. Let's just put that up, and there we go, we say equals, and we get, that's your amount that you will be paying, 2979,93 per month. So, for some, for some people who need to save their marriage, because they need to build that kitchen for their wives in five years' time, you got to make sure that you have got... 2,979 rand and 93 cents per month that you're going to put into a fund that is going to earn 13% per annum compounded monthly over a period of five years. So if you do this consistently every month, take your 2,979 rand 93 cents, go to the bank, do a debit order, whatever the case may be, put it into there consistently every month. For a period of five years, at the end of five years, you go to the bank, you check, you go to the ATM, you check what your account is worth in your bank, and you will be worth exactly 250,000 rand. You can then take that money and have fun. Do whatever you have to. Okay, so that is a future value. That is how we solve for X in a future value problem. We put it into our formula. Denominator multiplied by your bigger amount, press equals, divided by your entire amount, and that you will get your monthly installment. Right, now we don't say, let's go on to the next question. Now we don't say it's a sinking fund. Now this is what's going to interest or attract many of you sitting outside, especially the parents, because you now want to buy a house. Yeah, the big question, you need to buy a house. And you want to find out, can you afford a house? And you want to find out what your monthly repayment. So we're going to take the same situation, but we, instead of saying we're opening up a sinking fund, we're telling you, you need to take out a loan. So you're going to take a loan from a bank, XYZ bank. And we're not going to say 250000 What do you think is a decent price to pay for, for a house today? About $1.5 million. Let's go 1.5 million. So you need a loan for 1,5 million to buy a house. 
What's our interest rate at the moment? Your bond repayment that the banks offer you at the moment? I think it should be, I don't know. I, I didn't purchase a house through the bank yet. Right, inshallah, I never get to. Now, let's take this. 1.5 million loan and let's say our interest per annum is say, what's it about? 10%, 9%, let's say 9,5% per annum, compounded monthly. Remember, it's not a straight interest. They compound it monthly. So your interest on the first month, they accumulate it. Next month, get cal calculated on your new accumulated amount. The period that you're going to take the house. You know, everybody goes today for the 30-year period. We go for the 30-year period. Why? The longer we, this is what you think, this is what you think, that the longer I take to pay for it, the least I have to pay, the less I have to pay every month. But you don't realize that over a 30 year period, that 1.5 million rand house, you didn't pay 1.5 million, you probably paid about 5 million rand over a period of 30 years. Okay, so calculate your monthly, now we won't say installment, we will now say calculate your monthly repayment into the loan. So now you don't into the loan. So now as an informed mathematician, that's you, right? You are not, not going to go to the bank and phone the bank and find out whether you can afford a house. You can now calculate. You watch, you see a house, you go through the newspaper, you see an amount there, you see a house that you like, you want to find out whether you can whether you can afford the house. So let's see whether you can. So now, 1.5 million. So for those of you who are watching the show and who are thinking of buying a 1.5 million rent house, let's see whether you can afford. I can't say that. You know your finances. End of the day, you'll see that final amount and you say, can I afford? Can't I afford? You tell your wife, yes, we can. No, we can't. Sorry, babes. Next time. Let's go. 1.5. Now, this is a loan. Is it future value or present value? It's present value. So we go PV. PV equals X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the power minus N all over I. Remember, that is our formula. Okay, Mr. Cameraman, we're all on track. Present value, 1.5 million. So 1 million 500,000 is equal to X into 1 minus 1 plus, what's your interest rate? 9,5, 0, 0,095, right? Remember 9,5 divided by 100, 1, 2, that's 100. 0, 0,095 compounded monthly over 12 to the power minus 12 times, how many years guys? You're taking the loan over 30 years, all over I, 0, 0,095 over 12. Same system, same principle, guys. What I taught you last time. We take our denominator, multiply it here. We take our denominator, we multiply it there. We divide it by this entire bracket. And that will give us our X amount. So, just before, we don't have much time before our, before our last segment of today's episode. Let's go, 0, 0,095. So, there we go. 0, 0,095 over 12. I'm going to work a little bit faster now times 1,500,000, 1, 2, 3, equals. We divide that by open brackets, 1 minus, open brackets, 1 plus, fraction, 0, 0,095 over 12, close brackets, to the power, minus 12, times 30, close brackets at the end, equals. That's what you will be paying every month. You will be paying, are you ready? One two six one two point eight one per month. That would be your monthly repayment for your loan on a 1.5 million rand house under today's circumstances. If the interest rate is pegged at say 9.5 percent per annum, you will need to find out can you afford 12,612 rands and 81 cents per month. Okay, guys, I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoyed this segment of uh, today's show. We're now cutting for an ad break. I'll see you back in three minutes' time to close the show. Right, guys, welcome back to the ITV Math Show. Before we cut for the break, 
some of you that are watching the show, some of your parents that are watching the show, you now sitting in the... And those of you that also are considering buying a house or buying equipment or furniture, whatever the case may be, you want to find out if you take out a loan for 1.5 million, your monthly repayment, you use this formula and you calculated your affordability. Can you afford it or can't you afford it? That's entirely up to you. That's your decision. But now you want to find out what did that house, did that house cost you 1.5 million? Today you speak to somebody, I got this at a bargain. I only paid 1.5 bar for it. I only got, I only paid 1.5 million. Did you pay 1.5 million? Did you pay cash for it? No, I didn't pay cash. Oh, nice. For how long did you, you took a loan for it? Uh-huh. How long did you take it for? 30 years. So did you pay 1.5? Yeah, I paid 1.5. You're a liar. You're only lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself because you're making yourself feel nice. You want to go to bed, put your head on the pillow at night and think that you paid 1.5. You didn't pay 1.5. You paid 12,000. You are paying 12,681 times 12 months times times 12 months times 30 years. Now you tell me how much you paid. So let's take it. 12,612.81 and many of you don't even want to hear this. Nobody wants to see it and some of you are going to put your hands over your head and you're going to say, oh my word, is that what I paid for the... Yes, that's what you paid. So we're going to take 12,612.81 times 12 times 30. Are you guys ready for the shocker? Here goes. You paid for 1.5 million rand house, you paid 4,540,611 rand and 60 cents. Like it or not, some of you might be gulping on your tea, choking on your biscuit. That's what you paid. You paid 4.5 million rand for 1.5 million rand house. And you know what's the beauty part? And many of you are going to associate with what I'm about to tell you. That in your 29th year of your repayment. Remember you took it out for 30 years. In your 29th year. God forbid. You lose your job. And you cannot afford to pay 12,612 rand and 81 cents. Guess what happens? Yes you are right. They repossess your house. They kick you out of your house. You lose whatever you paid in over the past 29 years. The institution will then take over the house. Because the house doesn't belong to you. The house belongs to the finance house. Whoever financed you. And they will auction the house. For probably 3 million rand. And the new buyer. The new buyer will think he got it at a bargain. Because he bought it on auction. And he is going to refinance that 3 million rand over another 30 years until it belongs to him. So guys, this is the system of riba. This is what we talk about. When we talk about riba, we talk about interest. We are into now hardcore riba. Right. This is what it's, this is what it's all about. So you paid 4.5 million rand. Now, hypothetically, now this is an interesting component. Because we're now moving on to a new topic called the balance outstanding. So put the heading down there, the balance outstanding. So basically you took out the loan. Remember we said we're moving from the same example. You took it over for 30 years. You decide you've got a five rand in your pocket and you decide to go and tata my chance. So you can buy yourself a lotto ticket. <laughs> Haram. So you take it. But you do it. I mean, why? What's the difference? You bought a house through the bank, buying a lotto ticket, both are haram. So might as well go buy the lotto ticket. Joke. But anyway, take the lotto. You took a five rand. You went and you bought yourself a lotto ticket. And now you are sitting nicely and you are waiting on a Wednesday night for Powerball to come and you are seeing the lotto numbers being drawn. Hey! You win the lotto. You have just realized you cracked it. You are the man. According to you, you are the man. 
So you won a lump sum of money. We're not going to tell the whole world how much you won. Otherwise, everybody's going to start being your friend. Right. But in any case, you, start, you won the lotto. Now you decide. For the 30 year, remember your loan was taken out. Your original loan was taken out for 30 years. You won the lotto and you want to repay 20 years of your loan. Now, calculate the balance outstanding on your loan. Right? So guys, this is the way we're going to calculate. Now, meaning, let's put it into perspective again. You took out a loan for 30 years. You played the lotto and you got some lump sum. Or you hit the jackpot. Or you came up with some innovative idea and you just became the guy. You then take your money and you want to pay up 20 years of your 30 year loan. You want to know how much do you still owe the bank for that last 10 year period. Remember, you took it for 30 you're paying up 20. What's your window period? How much do you still owe them for? 10 years. Now you need to calculate how much do you owe. What's that amount that you still owe them? On a 1.5 million rand loan. Okay? So here goes, guys. Here goes. Okay. Remember, your loan amount here. Right. So we're now going to be using the PV formula for calculating balance outstanding. For calculating balance outstanding, you use the PV formula. So PV equals X into 1 minus 1 plus I to the power minus N all over I. PV, your big amount, that's what you need to find out. That's your balance outstanding. That's your balance outstanding. That's your PV value. Is equal to X. You found out X. What are you paying per month? You're paying 12,612 rands 81 cents into 1 minus 1 plus your interest there, 0, 0.095 over 12 to the power minus. Now be careful here. The N, I want you to put in pencil or in red, F minus P. And what does F minus P? So you'll do this now for balance outstanding. Your full term minus your paid up term, right? So let's do this. What is your full term, right? What is your full term? Your full term minus, there's your minus, your paid up term. So your full term was 30 years times 12. Why? Because that was compounded, remember it was compounded monthly. Minus your paid up term, 20 years. So there's your full term. Minus your paid up term. So it's minus 20 times 12. So what do we have? 30 times 12. 360 minus 20 times 12, 240. So 360 minus 240, that means my N amount is 120. And where did I get that from? We got it from there. To calculate your N for the balance outstanding, to calculate your N, you just put brackets and put F minus P in pencil. It's not part of your formula. It's there for you to understand. Put F minus P. What does F stand for? Full term minus your paid up term. F minus P. Full term, including your compoundings, minus your paid up term, including your compoundings. So you got your full term minus your paid up term. 360 payments. 30 years times 12, 360 payments minus 20 years times 12, which is 240. And that gives you a balance outstanding term of 120 payments that you still need to make. Over I, 0, 0.095 over 12. Now, guys... This is now also going to be another shocker for you. So let's just put our calculator back up there. And let's go. We now say 12,612 rands, 81 cents, open brackets. 1 minus, open brackets, 1 plus fraction. We go 0, 0,095 over 12, close brackets, to the power, minus 120. Don't forget, close the bracket. Close the bracket. There we go equals right we do our numerator we say equals now we can say divide that by our fraction 0, 0.095 over 12 and now this is your balance outstanding guys you took out a loan for 30 years you paid up 20 years of it in one lump sum amount 
How much do you still owe the bank? Here goes. Boom. Guys, on a 1.5 million rand loan, after paying 20 years of a 30 year loan, guys in studio, are you ready for this? You've been waiting for this. You still owe 974,733 rands and 24 cents. Outstanding. Jemut Patal, you've got to pay. You still owe. You took the loan out for 30 years. You paid up 20 years. You, your loan amount was only 1.5 million. You still owe them a million rand. Right? Why? What have you been paying? For that first 18 years or 15 years of your loan, you have only been paying the interest on that capital amount that you took. Your capital amount of 1.5 did not come down. It only started coming down after the 15th year. So 15 times 12. After 180 payments of 12,000 rand, 12,500 rand, that's when your capital amount of 1.5 only started dropping that is why you only paid basically you only paid off five you only knocked off five hundred thousand from your 1.5 million rand loan guys we can we've come i hope you guys enjoyed i hope it was an eye opener for many of you that are watching the show i hope you enjoyed it remember grade 12 you're writing on this so for everyone else it's an eye opener grade 12 you need to stress you need to know this it's coming out in your exam Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show and I'll see you for the next component of finance, episode 3. Stay tuned, channel 347, uh, DSTV, go on to ITV Networks, itvnetworks.tv to upload or download all our previous episodes. From me, your host, Mohammed, uh, Mohammed Gota, and from the rest of our team here in the ITV studios, we tell you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الجاد قد عظمات فللأمجاد بانيها ومن يسعى إلى العليا سيدركها بما فيها ويبني مجده جدلا فروح الفاذ يعليها ليصبح همة تروي عن العليا ما